Ready. All right. Uh, Corey, can you please have a one word prompt? Dramatic. Dramatic. All right. Here we go. Three, two, one. Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of drama in this one. A lot of kid, kid drama, kid dramatics. Kid drama. You get crying. You get death. I'm surprised at how much people like died. There's like a decent amount of violence. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's an interesting one. It, it feels like kind of like they've turned a school play into a movie. I mean, that is what it is. Hold on one second. Hey, welcome to the Overtalking Podcast with your hosts, Ken and CJ. Say hi, CJ. Hi, CJ. This is the show where we talk over TV shows and movies. It's chosen by our guests, and we let our guests actually choose this one, in case you couldn't tell. <laughs> uh, we're watching 2003's Peter Pan. This isn't one that CJ specifically pushed the guests to choose. <laughs> Can you believe it? Yeah. Love it. <laughs> we're joined once again by Corey Drennan. Hi. Hi! I wanted to Hi. watch Die Hard, but CJ was like, please. <laughs> yeah. First movie I've ever seen. Fun fact, Die Hard. I was in my little uh, car- baby carriage. My parents brought me to the movie theaters. True nice. story. No idea if I was actually facing the screen at any point, but I may have just yeah, been I hiding <laughs> Remember, at their feet. I think mine was another Disney movie. It was uh, Little Mermaid. Classic. Yeah. Not, not the live action one, though. I'm not the- that young. Earliest movie I can remember seeing in the theater was episode three of Star Wars. That's the earliest one nice. I can remember, but I'm sure it wasn't my first. Huh? I'm, just, I'm sure that wasn't my first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Memories is probably Jungle Book, like Disney movies. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I wore that VHS tape out and just playing yeah. on a repeat. That, that was your repeat? Mine was Wizard yeah. of Oz at home. That was my repeat. That one I feel like that. There's parts of that that are, feel like kind of scary for a kid. Very, yeah, totally. The monkeys. Yeah. No nightmares from that or anything. No, I. I nope. I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> don't remember. I don't know. Um, I just remember really liking it. Yep. Who's excited for the uh, screen adaptation of Wicked? I just saw the the trailer for that <laughs> the other day, and it not Corey. <laughs> It it at least looks cool, like the the. It looks you know, visually fine. Yeah, the yeah. visually appealing. I haven't watched any of the trailers, but I've also never seen Wicked, the Broadway show. Yeah, me neither. Uh, yeah, me neither. I'm yeah. I'm cultured in in three things, and it's the Road to El Dorado, that's right. Labyrinth, and 2003 Peter Pan. <laughs> Perfect, <laughs> completing the canon. That's my culture. Yeah, that's it. Well, you'll have to watch something else before next time, then I guess. Yeah. Um, Have you guys seen Book of Mormon? No. Yes. Yeah, Can, that was excellent. Yeah. See, a I, long time ago when I, I saw it. It was really good. I I thought it was fine. I didn't really. You said, oh, that's okay. I thought it, <laughs> we went and saw it. I was like. I'd seen it. So it's, it was, it's so hyped up. And then I went and yeah. saw it. I was like, oh, okay. It was all right. <laughs> Maybe you saw just a not a good performance of it or something no they were i mean they were acting like crazy it was great like it was performed really well but i think it was just like the jokes that people were like fully like ah, ha, ha. i was just like i don't that's not <laughs> uh, that funny i don't <laughs> when did you you saw it like way after it first came out right this was several months ago yeah so like yeah, in okay yeah that, that's like what ten years after it first came out. The jokes Probably. might not about be that. as yeah. funny now as maybe they first were when they came out. I yeah, know. I don't know. I, I guess I should expect it. It's written by the South Park guys, so it is a lot of just like yeah. you know mm-hmm. blue it's humor. Mm-hmm. Who here likes South Park? I haven't no. seen it. No, <laughs> no. Just me. I just haven't seen it. That's I. I haven't seen a lot of stuff. Have you, you never right. seen we, a single we established episode? It's only those three movies, right? So. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. all you see. Okay. No, I have seen Gravity Falls, and I was listening to your oh. recent episode and enjoying that. Oh, nice. I have I gone Gravity back Falls. and started it from the beginning. It's it's I've a great show. Watched two episodes so far, but I did yeah. like it. Yeah. It's I not that that's what we're talking about, but I like that it's two seasons. The episodes are really short. They had I don't know if you guys talked about this because I didn't finish the episode, but they had the option to renew the contract for a third season and the creator said no i'm not here to make money i'm <laughs> that's not what he said <laughs> but the, yeah it's, he didn't compromise the value of like the story which i think that's great especially yeah. for a child's tv show <laughs> but yeah. you know it's multi-generational totally i think yeah i, I agree. yeah 
I don't think slapping the label of like kid show should stop anybody. Like SpongeBob Absolutely. fucking rules. That's yeah. an incredible <laughs> show. <laughs> I think yeah. it's supposed to be for kids, but it still holds up and it's still hilarious. Which is why I always bring children's content to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we need it. After watching um, every Expendables movie in a row, we, we need a, a Peter yeah. Pan cali- a palette, uh, palette cleanser. Print. Palette yeah. cleanser. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Peter Pan palette cleanser. Yeah. It's like a vocal warm up. Cleanser. Wow. <laughs> well, we are going to talk about Peter Pan yeah. <laughs> and more coming up on the Over Talking Podcast. What if you could escape to a faraway world without parents? Forget them, Wendy. Forget them all. Come away to Neverland. Without any rules. Without anyone telling you what to do. Come with me where you'll never, never have to worry about grown up things again. And we're back on the Over Talking Podcast show. Once again, by returning guest Corey Drennan, and we're talking about Peter Pan 2003's adaptation. We're going to put 30 seconds on the clock for you, to, Corey, to describe for someone who's not yet seen this adaptation of Peter Pan, which is the same as every other Peter Pan, I believe, uh, what it's all about. Ready, go. And uh, we are in early 20th century London, where we are with the Darling family. Wendy, John, Michael are the kids. When one night, uh, Wendy's like, this is my last night in the nursery. I don't want to grow up. And original Sigma male Peter Pan flies through the window. Uh, and he's like, hey, let's go. And they're like, yeah, not bad. And then they, they go, oh, they go. And then they fight. And Captain Hook is there. And he's like, I Five, love killing kids. Four, three, and then they beat him. Two, the end. One. Time. Yeah, I, sh- I should have said no spoilers. Oh no! <laughs> oh um, no! Oh, shit! I can take it again. <laughs> no, it's okay. Do Do you think uh, people don't know what happens? Yeah, no, that's I'm, what I'm I, just <laughs> Dang it! If, if they are living under a rock, then they surely yeah. do not know what happens. Yeah, and I know the thing that allows people to fly is everyone say it with me: fairy dust uh, and happy fairy thoughts. Dust. Yeah, happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. Um, but you know what that. gives me happy thoughts? What gives you happy thoughts? Magic, magic mind. mind. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. CJ, what's magic mind? Well, magic mind is a mental performance shot. It's something you can take in the morning. Doesn't have to replace coffee. It's got a little matcha and caffeine. Makes you feel good. Makes you feel focused. If you've got like a task you got to complete, like, oh, I got to write this thing or, or want to be artsy and creative, you pop one of these bad boys and it'll get you going. Yeah, it, for listeners of the show, we've been talking about them for a little while now. Uh, I think both CJ and I have been drinking for like 30 days straight at this point. And it's one of those things that's cumulative. So the more you drink it consistently, the more it helps you. And I, I've definitely been seeing the benefits of it. I've talked about how it's helped me at work previously. I actually, at work, we have these things called sprints, which are like two week cadences of how much work we get done. I was the sprint champ while I've been drinking Magic Mind. <laughs> like, it's genuinely helping me in my career, which is amazing. And yeah, I just can't say good enough things about it. Uh, I've replaced coffee with it at this point, although oh, it can wow. be drink, drank alongside coffee. But yeah, uh, that's what I, mean, I do. Yeah, it's kind of all I need. And uh, for our listeners, we have a one time deal for you. Mm-hmm. If you head on over to magicmind.com slash overtalking trial, or use the code Overtalking Trial, you can get a free trial. You get three bottles for free. Yeah. If you've been hearing us talk about this and you want to try it out, this is the perfect opportunity. Go to magicmind.com slash all caps O V E R T A L K I N G T R I A L with code Overtalking Trial. And you can cancel your subscription at any time and not get charged. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so go try it and let us know what you thought. And let us know if it's helping you as well. Head on over to magicmind.com slash overtalking trial. Yes. See, Corey, I feel, feel like you panicked there at the end. But if you had, had taken a magic mind, I think the summary would have been just you would have nailed it. it basically memorized the Wikipedia more. page. Yeah, and just straight to the point. Yeah. I can't wait to tell you guys what I think. Great. Yeah. I, I know the people in this movie have memory problems at one point. Uh, but if right. they were drinking magic mind, they, <laughs> they, they would, would not have remembered their parents. All so. problem solved. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do, does anyone else think it was weird when the kids start calling Wendy their mom? I, <laughs> made me feel weird. Yes. And Peter Pan the dad. Like, I didn't, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like, no, you're. They're like Don't she's a year or two older than you. It's not. Yeah. And your sister, your literal yeah. sister. Yeah. So Corey, why this yes. movie? Uh, it's mostly very nostalgic to me. And then I watched it for the first time as an adult, like last year, and I find a lot of like ironic entertainment in it. <laughs> there is a lot of death for a children's movie. Um, <laughs> also, um, they made Peter Pan American for some reason. He's just yeah. an American boy. <laughs> and everyone else is British. Everyone else is English. And yeah, there are parts of it that are, I don't know, it's just, I don't strange. Um, <laughs> yeah, they, a guy gets shot. <laughs> There's a like full, full gun violence of, yeah, and full stabbing. Gun violence. Yeah. At the, be- at the beginning, Peter Pan literally says he wants to steal these kids away from their parents. Yeah. And I was looking as hard as I could and I couldn't find it, but I'm very surprised there is not a like horror recut of the trailer or something. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen those for like other movies before? Yeah. It's, it's kind of funny, but I That's was totally idea. expecting there'd be something here for <laughs> this movie. There are um like this very specific genre of books that's like thriller Peter Pan. There's one called Ooh. like Windy, comma Darling. Um, that's just awful. Um, <laughs> I did read it. It's on my bookshelf. Um, and then there's another about? one. Well, okay. The book Windy, comma Darling is about the granddaughter of Windy Darling. I forget her name, but she has made a lot of money off of these skincare products because they use like um, pixie dust and Peter Pan's blood. Um, Jesus. Wow. But it's it's her daughter's blood because she had a kid with Peter Pan, but he's like he's trapped outside of Neverland. So she she doesn't have sex with a child because he like grows up because he's outside of Neverland, but he turns out to be this like really bad guy. This sounds amazing. Yeah, <laughs> and her, her daughter's in like a coma and she takes her daughter's blood like every month to make these skincare products. Make this into a movie. Uh, For the listeners, wow. Ken's jaw was dropped. <laughs> like yeah. mouth agape. Sounds great. I'd watch it. Yeah. That is wild, but I yeah. guess not surprising. Peter Pan, is that Peter Pan like public domain at this point? Do you still have know. to like buy the rights for it? It's not since it wasn't originally Disney. I feel like it, it might. I don't know if it's public domain. Yeah. I, I, I know I, I said like another Disney movie before, but I don't think this movie is Disney, right? It's just. A, it's universal. It's, yeah. Right. Yeah. Confirmed. It is public domain. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. okay, great. Yeah. So we'll be wow. seeing a uh, Peter Pan yep. horror movie pretty soon, just yeah, like uh, Winnie the Pooh and other things. <laughs> uh, whoa, sorry. This year it entered public this domain. This year? So, yeah. so yes, exactly. Wow. Yeah, no, wow. we really There's will. so many things entered in the public domain. Mickey Mouse. Steam- Winnie the Pooh. No, Steamboat Willie. Yeah, not Mickey not, Mouse. No, sorry. Not Mickey Steamboat Mouse. Willie. Steamboat Willie. Steamboat Willie. Steamboat Willie. Which That's is correct. different. Yeah. Definitely yeah. not looking exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I don't watch horror movies as everyone knows, but I, the Winnie the Pooh stuff I am curious. <laughs> like seeing that that is going to be turned into like horror movies, I was like, I don't know, that might be interesting. There's two already. Yeah, slate it up Blood and for honey. for your Halloween season. We might Ooh. have to. I've heard the second one is like actually. There's two watchable. <laughs> yeah, Blood and Honey too. Yeah, but mostly nostalgia is why I picked this movie. Got also, okay. they yeah. made. Peter Pan, why did they make him such a player? Like, he's, like, whispering in <laughs> yeah. Wendy's ear at one point. Yeah. And, like, winking at her. And I, he's charming in the books, but he's not like that. <laughs> yeah. Another weird part that I noted, so that they have this this dog that is basically, they say, their nurse, their, like, mm-hmm. caretaker. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And at one point, the parents get, the dad gets mad at the dog and puts it outside and it's nighttime, and then we see it is snowing, and there's no doghouse or anything. It's like yeah. that is so cruel. Straight up break, mana. Yeah, Ugh. yeah. I think they brought Aunt Millicent is not a character in the books. I don't think. I think they brought her in to kind of like be a, a plot driving force for Wendy yeah. to grow up and to like not villainize the dad as much as he is in the original well, story. I think in the original story, we were all wondering where that one lost boy was going to get adopted into. And uh, that's really nice that they S- made slightly. a device. Yeah. <laughs> Put some respect on his slightly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What a name. 
It was so random too. Like why he, that didn't have, he could have just gone in with the rest of them. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I don't know why he was separate. (laughs) Just to give the aunt something to do at the end, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And she knows his name too. And uh, Tinkerbell shot magic into her. her Oh, sorry. Of course. (laughs) Yeah. Is there some like drug allegories or anything there where Tinkerbell, (laughs) Tinkerbell's a, a dealer getting everybody's fix? Yeah. Well, not drug allegories, but I mean, there are a lot of, Oh, Other yeah. allegories in this movie, Corey. Yeah. Do you want to please enlighten us? Because I'm sure I would butcher any anything that um, would have to do with Captain Hook and the dad and stuff like that, right? Yeah, in the play, Captain Hook and Mister Darling uh, are often double cast, as they were in um, this book. CJ, do you have a a, a mullet? <laughs> as a mohawk. <laughs> oh. Well, Whoa. Whoa. it's getting kind of long the right there. Yeah, it's good. Sorry for the listeners. Oh, CJ yeah. turned around on camera and I saw the back <laughs> of his head. <laughs> it turned anyways. into a lost boy over there. Dick. Um, yeah, truly. Yeah, so they, they're often double cast as something for, I don't know, the audience to sink their teeth into. And as far as like, a, how to view like the adult characters that are presented in um, the story. Also, how you touched, you guys touched on it, how how they treat women and how like, they're not they go to neverland to not grow up but like wendy goes there and is put into a grown-up role yeah Mm. just lots to sink your teeth into because then you look at the like actual mother in the story and how she just kind of is there Um, yeah i think the actress had like five lines or something she didn't speak much she's asleep yeah for the vast majority of the movie yeah and then when she wakes up she is just also oblivious that her kids are actually home yeah Yeah. Does this movie pass the Bechdel test? What do they think? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I don't. Do two female characters have a conversation I, in the movie? I, I don't, don't know if they do. She so. must say something to her mom, right? I, I don't, don't know. know. Yeah. And if it does, it's maybe a line, like a couple no. of words. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. I was I was talking to Meg about some of the more the sink your teeth into stuff about mm-hmm. uh, Captain Hook and the dad played mm-hmm. by the same actor and. I'm sure this has been discussed many times, but I just want to, uh, I don't know, discuss it here maybe. But mm-hmm. like, am I off in thinking that the reason they did that was be- to show like that the dad was like trying to make the kids grow up because they put the dog outside. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of Captain Hook's ro- role too, because he's the antithesis yeah. to Peter Pan who never wants to grow up. Totally. Yeah. Okay. I cool. agree. Also, and as we've touched on, the dad is much meaner in like the book. So they made him a little bit softer Mm -hmm. as like a father figure here um, than they did in like the Disney Peter Pan or even in the, the book slash play. Okay. Yeah. I did like that part of his character trait was like, he didn't know how to have small talk with his boss. (laughs) Yeah. They added it a lot in the beginning. (laughs) He's like just stammering and had to write down like, how about that weather or whatever? Like (laughs) the generic (laughs) conversation topic i like that part yeah that is relatable that is funny. yeah i i like at the end they <laughs> after he's like sure we'll adopt all these kids and he's like darn the expense or however the neighbors says it. Dash the expense yes and then one of the kids just dumps out a bunch of the blooms and yeah yeah jewelry and, it's like yeah. okay solved yeah, yeah. done done uh, I will say one part I do enjoy about this like story is the the shadow escaping Peter Pan. Mm-hmm. I feel like that mm-hmm. always is a funny bit <laughs> that they should keep doing that and fifty more remakes. I'm sure they're gonna make. Keep it in there. <laughs> yeah. In the in in the Disney one, they the way they reattach it was soap, right? He tried. So Peter Pan is trying to attach it with soap, um, but I think she okay. sews it in the Disney movie too. Wow, the sewing thing. It, for for a live action one, felt kind of grotesque. Scary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does feel kind of brutal. <laughs> yeah, uh, through the shadow, fine, but through the foot, oh my god. Yeah, I thought the actress that played Wendy was very good. Um, she was a very yeah. good child actor in this. Yeah, because you know, with child actors, you never know; it can go either way. I thought she. I was thought everyone good. was was pretty well acted in this movie. I had the biggest childhood crush on Jeremy Sumter, but. I some some of his line deliveries is the, the Black Castle. We're gonna meet her at the Black Castle. Well, I don't know. Just some of them I, I could go without, but it's fine. I'm I'm now 
continuing to picture what the, the horror movie version of this is where mm-hmm. they're going to like take a staple right. gun and staple the, the shadow back onto people. And that's the form oh, of that's white torture. Oh, that's be part of it. Yeah. Slasher. Yeah. Lots yeah. to work with. Stealing it's away kids the mermaids screaming. Yeah. Oh, the mermaids. Who were oh, actually yeah. scary in this adaptation. That was, for sure. Yeah. Also, do we, do we need the narration? Did that oh, really yeah. add forgot, to the movie? I kept forgetting that the narration was part of it. Yeah. And yeah. Then it would come back in and be like, oh, yeah, that's jarring. Yeah. And then at the end, she's like, but I never saw Peter come back. It's me, Wendy, the whole time. <laughs> ah, what a reveal. Yeah. What? No, I don't think it was necessary, but I think it the intent was to add like it, the storytelling aspect yeah, of it as it if you were like telling a story. The book. But yeah. necessary? No. No, yeah. Especially when it's like, the, yeah, the narration comes on for like five words. Yeah. It's like, and then this mm-hmm. happened. It's like, yeah, and we're watching. Yeah, we can, it. we yeah. were seeing, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh huh. Yeah. I, I read that they had partially filmed uh, an alternate ending where the, it, it was like Wendy grown up and then she mm-hmm. introduces Peter Pan to her child, which I think mm-hmm. is from the book. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I don't think Wendy introduces her kid, but Peter oh, comes no. back after. Wendy grows up. It's quite tragic because Peter does forget about the whole thing because that's the nature of his not curse, but like being in Neverland. He just forgets. His ailment. Yeah. Um, Also, they did a little bit of this in the flying scene, but in the book, they fly for a while and Peter just like leaves them and then the kids are just flying by themselves and Peter's just gone for a while and he'll come back and be like, who are you? Oh my God. Yeah, he just has a horrible memory. And they did that a little bit in the movie, but that's, I think, what that was supposed to be. He just forgets. Dang. Is the flying through space part, does that happen in all the other stuff? That one, that seems different Disney. to me. Not yeah. in Disney, but I think okay. it, it's, it's in the book a little bit. Gotcha. Okay. When they're, yeah, just like intergalaxy tra- <laughs> travel. Yeah. Or what, I don't know about the planets. play. Yeah. I like that Peter Pan told one of the the boys to hold on and don't let go. And then like 10 seconds later, they've all let go. Yeah. Yeah. They let go and he keeps flying and he's just like, oh, 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 (laughs) well. What do you guys think of Peter Pan's laugh? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) Just over it. It's a lot. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I wonder how many takes that they had to do for that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I got some other things you might be wondering about. So I think it might be time for... Is it trivia time? Hey, did you do that? It is. That's right. It's the trivia portion of our show where we pit our guests and CJ head-to-head to see who knows the most about what we watched. Corey, CJ, are you two ready? Born ready. Ready to lose. Ready. All right. <laughs> and be proud of it. Yep. <laughs> I don't want to win. That's my role. All right. First question. The actor who played Peter Pan grew how many inches during filming? Oh, my God. Oh. It was so obvious that he was going through puberty <laughs> yeah. during he was actively growing up. Mm. Um, I'm going to say six. I was going to say like three. Corey's closer was eight inches. Wow. Eight <laughs> re- inches. Oh, my God. They had to rebuild the nursery window four times because he kept bonking his head on it. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Eight inches is so many. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Dang. The the scene where like Tinkerbell comes back to life and he's like she's like tickling him and he falls on the ground, you can just see how long his limbs are. You yeah. could really see it in that shot. Yeah, the, the movie was shot in order too, so you can oh, you, the whole time you can just I didn't watch know that. growing. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. All right. Corey's up one nil. Next question. This movie was originally planned to be a prequel to what other film? First person to shout it out gets the ans- gets the point. A prequel? Oh, There's like this... 20 Peter Pan movies. I don't know. It was originally supposed to be a prequel to another movie? Oh, Hook? Hook is correct. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but Dustin Hoffman didn't want to reprise his role, so they just scrapped mm. that and just did a Oh, that's so movie. funny. Huh. One guy was just like, I don't want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were like, okay. <laughs> I've never seen Hook, personally. Really? It's very, it's very, very good. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we should I, have I know, watched like, that. Rufio or something is a reference, but that's all I know. It's know. Robin Williams. Yeah, Robin Williams. I'm sure I would like it. It's very, just very one of those good. things. I should rewatch it. I haven't seen it in forever. Yeah, it's very good. 
All right, next question. This film suffered in the box office because it was competing against what other mega fantasy sequel? Oh, was it Harry Potter? Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets? It was not. Oh, oh was it Lord of the Rings? No, 2003. One of them. Oh, was it Lord of the Rings? Um, uh, the sequel. Two, two Towers? <laughs> the second one. one. Was it Lord of the Rings, Return of the King? That's it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> CJ, you heard that one. You can't no, let me I, win. You didn't. Could, could not name any of the subtitles of the Lord of the Rings movies. Oh, really? No? Yeah. Oh, okay. Have we all seen all of them? Yes. The Lord of the Rings, who, yeah. Who here has, yeah. has watched them all in like one day? No. <laughs> of course. Of course. Extended? Yeah. Extended? Extended. Yes. Oh. Wow. Back when I had time to do that. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. I think it was the second one, seeing that in theaters where there's twice in the movie i thought the movie was over and then it, it mm-hmm. like fades yeah. to white and then comes back it's like oh we're still going okay this is still this is a really long the movie the third movie has like four of those i think i think yeah. you're thinking of the third movie CJ, oh, okay, because yeah. it's yeah. it's like yeah there's a lot that's wild all right next question uh and for this one cj i'm gonna need you to get up the uh horror soundboard if you <laughs> if you have that readily available okay how many Wilhelm screams can be heard in this movie? Oh, Ugh. definitely Do one. Do we have that on there? Yeah, I heard no, one. No, I don't. Oh, I heard I one this at one. the end. <laughs> 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 the infamous Wilhelm scream. I only heard so, one. Sorry, what was everyone? Yeah, answer? I only I only heard one as well. So I'm just gonna say one. But there might one be. is the correct answer. Uh, trying, to throw, okay. trying to throw you off a little bit. Yeah. Finally on the board. Yeah. Uh, so what is it? Uh, three to one. Four to one. <laughs> Four to one? Don't act so surprised, Ked. Well, I've only asked four questions, so I don't know how that's possible. We both got the last one right. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, this is definitely the final question. <laughs> what is the Rotten Tomatoes tomato meter score in percentage closest without going over? For those who don't know, this is the critic score in Rotten Tomatoes. Corey, since you're in the lead, just to give CJ a, maybe a little heads up. A pretty point. Advantage. Uh, you will go first. Oh, um, 73. Okay. One dollar. Corey is our winner. It was 77%. Oh, what? Dang. Yeah. Pretty high. Called it. Something that I meant to talk about earlier um, is the chanting that happens throughout the movie. What do you guys think about that? There's like a lot of chants. Pretty awkward. Um, <laughs> personally. I Yeah, I thought it was weird that like. The I I believe in fairies, I do, I do. That then yeah. affects all of the kids back in Britain and England and mm-hmm. the and mom the dad and, and adults. Yeah. Yeah. Um there's also like old alone done for. Yeah. And then I think they were like play, play. I think the chanting is supposed to be a nod to the play, because in mm. the play the audience um, is supposed the, to be yeah, they audiences are supposed to chant those things as well. So I think that's what oh. it was supposed to be, but I okay. don't think it super worked. <laughs> no, for a for <laughs> a film weird. medium, yeah. went on for too long too. They could have yeah, it went on for like two minutes. <laughs> yeah, did they say I do I do in the the play version too? I don't know. I think I the, think you're just supposed to just, just like clap and cheer for Tinkerbell to oh, okay. be alive, and if you yeah. don't, she dies. She dies, yeah. Mm-hmm. I like how Hook just went up behind one fairy and was just like, I don't believe in fairies. And then just, <laughs> oh, yeah. just killed it. Yeah. That's, yeah, another one of those parts where I was like, Jesus, they keep killing people. I was not <laughs> expecting this. They did. Action packed. God. That's right. Uh, I have one bonus question just Ooh. at the end. Um, what do you guys think the letterbox score is for this movie out of five to one decimal point? So this is just every day Joe Schmoe's Rating it on Letterbox. This is where I think it probably averages out to like a three point one or something, just like yeah. right in the middle. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say two point seven. See, it was closer. Three point four. Nice. Yeah. Okay. That's 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 actually pretty decent. For yeah. Letterbox. It's all the Jeremy cool. Sumter fan girls. <laughs> probably. Yeah. I, um, <laughs> when I so I I had a big crush on this guy, and. 
remember asking when I was a kid, not a magic eight ball because we didn't have that. But what we did have was a Happy Meal toy that was the shape of Hello Kitty's head. And if you like pressed a button, yeses or nos would like flash across and then it would land on one. I was like, is Peter Pan real? And it said yes. And I remember my heart just like stopping. And so I was like, I have to leave a note for him by my window. So I go to my window and I grab not a piece of paper. That would make too much sense. I just grab like a ruler because I guess that's what was closest. And I don't write on the ruler, hi, Peter, or my name is Corey. I I just write, I have blonde hair because Wendy doesn't have blonde hair. And he needs to know <laughs> that like I I don't have like brown or red hair, but I didn't know how to spell blonde. So <laughs> I didn't grab a dictionary, but I did grab a yellow colored pencil and just colored some yellow onto the ruler and I left it there with my harmonica because he likes to play pan flute and I don't remember when I went back to check it but I went back to check it and it said me too underneath and I didn't write that and I was wow. like freaking out and I like go to show my sister and her friend who are over and they just start cackling and so my <laughs> my sister's best friend looked at the ruler and she just they didn't know what it was they didn't know what i was doing they just saw like something written on a ruler but it, the, when it's yellow colored pencil on a wooden ruler it just looked like someone wrote i have hair <laughs> <laughs> so she wrote me too underneath but i was fully convinced that this peter pan um existed wow wow that's great was like seven yeah that story's going on our Instagram page for sure. <laughs> in, in co- inspirational quotes. <laughs> I have hair. Wow. That Me was too. great. Yeah. Dang. Well, I think it's time for ratings. Yes. We know you've been waiting. So now it's time to hear our ratings. Corey, on a scale of 1 to 10, what would you rate Peter Pan for you? Peter Pan, 2003 for me it gets it gets six teddy bears excellent okay six decapitated teddy bears i'm also glad to hear that i was afraid this is going to be like i love this movie it's perfect uh, yeah, that, that well, i do love this rating. movie yeah. I, I do love it but you know i gotta rate it honestly appreciate that that's fair. Okay. That makes me feel better about what yeah. <laughs> about the two that you're about to get. <laughs> well, yeah, Ken, you uh, want to well, go next? Maybe we'll go next. Uh, yeah, for me, uh, yeah, two. No, just kidding. Uh, yeah. One point for being a movie. Yeah. One point for being One a movie. Is, it is a movie. But here, here's my criteria. Five mm-hmm. or above, I'm going to rewatch it at some point. Mm-hmm. I am never going to probably rewatch this unless it's with like a future child. So yeah. uh, three and a half. Three and maybe. a half. <laughs> yeah. Got and, it. Uh, you know, it's. It was it was fine for what it was. It was, yeah. it was every it was like Peter I said, Pan. everyone was very well acted. It's just not just not for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. CJ for me. Yep, won't be watching this again. Uh, <laughs> oddly, again, oddly violent for a kids movie that, that, yeah. that took me by surprise. There were some cool visual effects and stuff. Them flying through space and like the Neverland background and mm-hmm. stuff like that was fun. Mm-hmm. I just see for me the nostalgia is Hook. Like that's the Peter Pan totally. I grew up with. <laughs> so like I the entire time watching this I'm just comparing it to that version. That's not, not my fair, president. But yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's not my Robin Williams. Uh so yeah, I think I you know, a three and a three and a half sounds pretty good. I might just do yeah. that as well. That's sorry, that's, Jason Isaacs. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. I mean we're we're not we're not children. This isn't for us. Yeah. Well, yeah. even like if I had kids, I don't know that this would be the version that I would show them first. I think I would go Disney. Yeah. Yeah. Again, and then seems... like hook when they're older. Yeah. Too much death and violence in this one, I think, yeah. for it being like a kid's movie. Peter yeah. Pan's too Plus much of a player. Song. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, when she when Wendy kisses Peter Pan at the end mm-hmm. and then he has like an orgasm and flies into the air, like <laughs> it was pink. wild. Yeah. Have you guys played the PS5 Jedi Survivor game? No. No. There's a part, spoilers, where the the main guy like gets kissed by this girl that he loves, and then it immediately goes into this like Oh, action sequence because he's been kissed, so he gets like all this juice. <laughs> it's so on funny. Super Saiyan. God. Uh, 
What is yeah. similar vibes here? Yeah, what yeah, is with that sure. trope? I don't. You guys don't feel like you could be on top of the world when your lady kisses you. <laughs> when you get the secret kiss hidden in the conspicuously in the right hand corner of her mouth, whatever that means. Yeah, I didn't understand that the entire oh, time. Yeah. I yeah, that's from the books. I have never been able to wrap my head around that. Um, yeah, it just seems weird. But people yeah. love to talk about it. Yeah, don't also don't like an an older person commenting on a little girl's mouth of like there's it's something weird. hidden in there. Like, <laughs> what? No, Ugh, yeah. don't look at me. She has a, a, woman's a woman's chin. Mouth. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. woman's chin. Like, ugh. What the fuck? No, what if he doesn't? What are you talking about? <laughs> what is that? Grown up teeth. Yeah, that's she, like it. <laughs> yeah. She lost her baby teeth. She'll have a woman's chin when she is of woman's age. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's also an aspect of the book of like someone saying like you're becoming a woman at age 13. That's not that's not what that is. Ugh. Blech. Well, on that note, yeah. Corey, thank you for joining us. Yeah. Uh, do you have any words of wisdom or anything you want to plug at the end here? Um, I do have something I want to plug. It's not um, mine, but speaking of things that are of public domain, uh, there one of my friends came out with an a radio play of the murder of steamboat willie it's wherever you can find podcasts it's from a show called nation of animation it's won some awards it's very fun wow wow that sounds awesome yeah. very on topic yeah <laughs> amazing speaking of murder well and steamboat willie yeah and steamboat willie it's just called nice. murder of steamboat willie yeah the murder of steamboat willie by nation of animation okay yeah that sounds awesome Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to check that out. Yeah. Cool. Well, Siege, what do we got? You can follow us on all of the things at Overtalking Pod. Email us at overtalkingpod at gmail.com. Go to our website, overtalkingpod.party. Call or text the show at USA Cat 1591. Oh, no, they're here. The uh, Overtalking Overlords. <laughs> yep. Oh, my God. Scary. Uh, there are ghastly <laughs> otherworldly landlords who show up at the end of every episode to remind me to remind you if you like this show, please go on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and rate and review. Where applicable, reviews are what help people find this podcast. Also, we spend no money in advertising, so if you'd like to help us tell a friend and spread the word, we'd really, really, really appreciate it. Thank you. And if you want to try out Magic Mind, go to magicmind.com slash overtalking trial to get a trial three pack of bottles. Link is in the show notes. Yes. And as we say at the end of every single episode, I do, I do I believe do in fairies. fairies. I do. I do. I do. I do. Bye. 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 This episode of the Over Talking Podcast was produced by Ken and CJ, edited by CJ. This week's guest was Corey Drennan. Music by Justin Peters, logo by Nate Richards. Check out Nate's work on Instagram at Nate Richards Designs. <laughs>